Okay, this is an update for Flycut, and all we're doing with this one, uh, the, the major update with it is just that this makes it so it's possible uh, for you to fly cut and then nest the part and save the parts. It's not just in the nest result, it's in, on the actual part itself uh, that can be saved. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and scan over this section here. This is the area we want to fly cut, and we're going to go ahead and set it for orange layer. Uh, which we're going to say right now is our fly cut layer. It's um, not set up particularly on the computer, uh, but we're going to say it's our fly cut layer. Uh, and what that would be is it would be a slightly slower version of your cut. Um, that way you fully pierce and the squares drop out. Uh, so that's fairly important. Uh, we've gone and done our scan and it is now fly cut. Let us go and select the layers, the uh, bend lines here. This is a part with bend lines. Uh, to do that we hold shift down and we scan over our parts from uh, right to left uh, over the lines. Anything that is under the box will be selected. And just make sure I got everything. Okay. And we're going to head, go ahead and make that layer 10 which is our bend line. And then we'll just go ahead and look around real quick and make sure that all of these are on our bend line. Uh, if you have a scrolling mouse wheel, uh, or a mouse with a scroll wheel rather, uh, you can push down on the button in, uh, of the scroll wheel and I'll give you that little hand thing that will let you move around the object. Uh, didn't know that was there for a long time. Now that I see it there, I use it a lot. Uh, so we can, <clears throat> the same thing we can do, we can do like, uh, fly cutting or a ring cut on this part. Uh, we could use like a scrap chop in the center of it uh, before sending it over to nest, but we're going to go ahead and just send it over to nest right now. So we scan over all of the parts. Uh, we right click and then we see uh, the add to part library and we can add one to 10 or we can do an input count. Um, let's go ahead and just send 10 over. And now we'll take, I'm just going to put one of the large part on our nest. And now we can select nest and nest out a batch of parts. And uh, something we'll see here is that the leftover parts went over here. Uh, that's kind of normal. If it can't fit them in, it sends them over to, uh, uh, to the next sheet. Uh, I do not have remnant turned on, otherwise it would put a remnant line across the top uh, to cut the sheet off. Uh, and that's a beneficial feature. Uh, that way your um, you know, useful drops are, you know, they, they only have straight lines on them. They don't have a bunch of jagged garbage. Uh, it's a lot easier to use that way. Uh, it does waste a little bit more material, so be aware of that. Uh, now we can go ahead and process this out. And if we want, uh, we can go and click File, Save As, and LXD, and name it, and it will save uh, not just the nest result, uh, results, both of them. It'll also save the primary document modified like this, and it will save the parts in our parts tree here. Uh, so a very useful feature. All you would do is uh, to open that again, you would go file op uh, import LXD, and then you would find the file, click on it, and import it into a new um, new loading of SipeCut. You would go, you know, file new and then open it up. Uh, so very simple process uh, to get parts uh, nested with uh, fly cutting in them or our other features. Um, just just a better way to do it than modifying the nest result. Um, not modifying the nest result is a lot slower because if you were to do like say 20 of these you'd have to modify each one whereas uh, with nesting you could uh, modify them all in primary documents, send them over and then uh, reuse them over and over again to make dozens or hundreds or thousands of this part uh, without having to recode it each and every time. Anyway, Thanks for watching.